Would you consider yourself to be a better Donkey Kong player than Billy Mitchell? I would say I'm better than Billy Mitchell, yes. Hello, you absolute legends. When talking about the most impactful rivalries in human history, there is really only one we can say for certain stands at the very top. No matter which sport or country you come from, everyone must agree that Billy Mitchell vs Steve Wiebe is the greatest rivalry of all time. I mean, the stakes could not have been any higher. These two men were vying for the most important world record this Earth has ever seen. In the documentary The King of Kong, which is both the most historically accurate and most important film ever ever produced, Billy and Steve were competing to get the highest score in Donkey Kong, a video game released over 40 years ago which these days at any one time has a peak concurrent player count of about 4. In one corner, you have the hero Steve Wiebe. A humble family man, Stephen J. Wiebe has done it all. He's a certified genius, having earned a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering and a Master of Education. He's had a lengthy career in roles that have made his community and the world a better place to live in. He's been an engineer for Boeing, a software engineer for B-Square, and is now imparting his wisdom to high school students as a math teacher. He is supremely talented, playing multiple musical instruments instruments and creating breathtaking musical works. He could have been a professional sportsman. He was even a basketball. He was a basketball. And of course, he's one of the greatest video game players of all time, achieving the Donkey Kong world record multiple times, and he didn't even need to cheat to do it. I mean, just look at how he holds an N64 controller. Steve Wiebe doesn't need to follow the user's manual because he's Steve Wiebe, and Steve Wiebe does what Steve Wiebe wants. He is the complete package, intelligent, wise, attractive, kind. He's got it all, but remains humble and down to earth. A true gentleman and a class act through and through. Then in the other corner, you have Billy Mitchell. Up until now, Steve Wiebe has remained quiet on the Billy Mitchell vs Twin Galaxies lawsuit. He's effectively remained out of the drama completely, not weighing in with his opinion. But recently, he has returned to fight Billy Mitchell yet again, providing Twin Galaxies with critical evidence that demolishes one of Billy's biggest lies. Throughout the entire lawsuit, Billy Mitchell has tried to peddle this insane conspiracy theory that the tapes that show his cheated gameplay were somehow edited to frame him and weren't the original tapes. Billy claims that you can't use the tapes as evidence because we don't know where they came from. And that's where Steve Wiebe comes to save the day, providing a videotape that comes directly from the King of Kong production staff, who got their copy directly from Billy Mitchell. And surprise, surprise, the footage on that tape is exactly the same as every other copy that's ever been used before. In this video, we will take a look at why this new evidence is so important and why it yet again proves that Billy Billy Mitchell is a lying con man who will say anything to try and hide the truth. I really hope you enjoy. Now legends, in this video I've partnered with Geology who offer award-winning skin, hair and body products. Honestly, there is absolutely no excuse. Everyone should be taking good care of themselves. And the simple fact is that if you look and smell good, people will treat you better. And when it comes to skincare, you just can't beat Geology. Personally, my skin is super oily, so I need to use Geology's everyday face wash, plus I use their nourishing eye cream because I have massive black eyes from not getting enough sleep. But if you have problems with acne or dry skin, Geology is perfect for that too. Plus, they have a whole range of products from body washes to deodorants, and hair shampoos and conditioners, and they are all extremely high quality. There is a good reason they have over 7,000 five-star reviews, and I seriously suggest giving Geology a try. The process is super simple. Just click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen and take the 30-second quiz, and Geology will send you a personalized routine right to your door. And right now for a limited time, if you use my code CARLJOB70, Geology will give you an exclusive 70% off their award-winning skincare trial set. Plus, you can save up to 30% on a product you choose to add on top. It's a really good deal, so again, just click the link in the description. 
At the end of July, I posted a video showing portions of Billy Mitchell's deposition where he was caught in a massive lie regarding the color of the joystick he used. During that video, I showed a couple of clips from two YouTube channels who were defending Billy, using arguments that Billy debunked himself during his deposition. Those channels were Van Buren 20 and Maris Memes. Unfortunately, I yet again underestimated the impact that putting channels like this in my videos has, because they received a ton of flack and a ton of hate from my viewers, which I didn't expect. Of course, I expected some people to leave a comment or something, but this response was really crazy, and not in a good way. I put the clips in my video because it made for good content, not because I wanted those people to receive hate. Since that video, a lot has changed. Van Buren 20 came to a really big realization that he was being used by Billy Mitchell, and made a video saying that he can no longer support him. He even tried to tell me, like... Oh, you, like, he, he told me, like, why don't you try to copyright strike Carl's video and take it down? And I'm like, I don't have that power. What do you mean? He used you in his video. You're in his video. And I said, Billy, that's fair use. You're allowed to take a, a clip of someone and use it in a video and commentate over it if it's re relevant and use it. Um, and it's transformative. It's fair use. No, no, you're in the video. He didn't, you didn't give him permission. I said, that's not how that works. That is not how that works. Um, he was trying to get me to take Car Carl's video down. I've spoken to Van Buren, and I was more shocked than anyone that he changed his stance, because I thought he was a bad actor intentionally lying on behalf of Billy. But as it turns out, he's actually a nice guy who was just misled by a con man. It happens. I'm going to put a link to his video in the description. Please go and show him some love and support for being brave enough to admit that he was taken for a ride. And I also spoke with Maris Memes, who is also very open-minded. Maris has changed his stance on certain aspects after looking at more of the evidence, and while while I did label him as a Billy Mitchell defender, that wasn't entirely accurate. While he was defending certain arguments, as it turns out, Maris is not a fan of Billy Mitchell at all. About a month ago, uh, Carl Jobs cited me in a video called The Red Stick of Destiny, where I was wrongfully labeled a Billy Mitchell supporter when I was, in fact, the Paul Legend's best friend. I have not gone after Billy Mitchell or Walter Day. I have not gone after either one of them. And there, there are multiple reasons I told this to Carl. I basically said, I live in the US and I have a family. Carl has a family, but he lives in Australia. So he had the better home ground advantage when it comes to being a gaming journalist to go after Billy Mitchell. Because it's more of a hassle to go out of the country and follow that type of a lawsuit. I give full credit to these guys for having mature conversations with me after I blasted them. This is really how YouTube discourse should be handled. Not with pathetic, frivolous lawsuits that waste everyone's time and money. Now, let's get on with the video. On the 2nd of February 2018, the administrator of the Donkey Kong Forum, known as Zelnia, made one of the biggest discoveries in video game history. The recordings of Billy Mitchell's Donkey Kong World Records were MAME generated. This was a big deal, and just so people aren't confused as to why this is so important, I'll quickly explain. Billy Mitchell always claimed he achieved his world records on real Donkey Kong arcade machines, and he submitted VHS tapes showing those world records as proof. MAME, on the other hand, is an emulator you can use to play Donkey Kong on a computer, which is how a lot of people these days play Donkey Kong. Many top players compete using MAME, and if you look at the top 10 Donkey Kong records, you'll see that half of them were done using MAME. Obviously, using MAME isn't a problem, and it's a totally legitimate way of competing. However, there are very different proof standards between MAME and real arcade hardware. With real arcade hardware, you need to record the inside of the machine and all of the physical components to prove that everything is compliant. With MAME, you can't do that. Instead, you have to use a very specific version of MAME that prevents cheating, and you also have to provide the INP file which logs all of your inputs. 
It is vitally important you provide the INP file because it confirms the version of MAME used and also confirms that save states weren't used. A simple video recording of MAME isn't good enough to prove anything. Because using an emulator, you can create the perfect run using save states. You can spend 20 hours playing each level over and over again, crafting the ideal run, then at the end, you can play the log file so it looks like just one smooth playthrough. If you just watch it visually, you would never know that save states were used. You can only detect that through the IMP file. The only reason you would ever submit a VHS tape of MAME gameplay and lie and say that it was arcade is to get past the cheat detection. Therefore, the only reasonable conclusion one can have is that Billy Mitchell used MAME and save states to produce his world records and tried to pass them off as arcade to avoid providing the IMP file, which would of course give away the fact that the runs weren't legit. And we know that his world records were done on MAME because of how the levels load, which is completely different to arcade. And it took 15 years for this to be found because these subtle differences weren't yet known. And what's interesting is that Billy Mitchell himself has said publicly that the tapes do show MAME gameplay. And the film footage that he has, that Jeremy has, shows MAME play. MAME. Ah. Now, I contend that if he gets the original tape, or he gets the original room shot, he will see that what I say is true. I'm not disputing what he says. What I'm disputing is the fact that I want him to have the original tape. Okay. However, Billy also claims the tapes that everyone has been using aren't the original tapes and Billy has been framed. Billy refuses to provide tapes of his own, so naturally all we can do is rely on footage that exists from third parties. In their investigation, Twin Galaxies got a hold of two copies of Billy's world records, one from Dwayne Richard and one from Greg Irway. Greg used to be a Twin Galaxies ref who was sent copies of Billy's records in 2007 directly from Walter Day. And Dwayne Richard also received a copy from Walter Day, because it just so happens that Walter Day sent a copy to all of the referees at the time. Both of the copies were identical to each other, and not only that, they matched exactly with the footage shown in The King of Kong. But Billy jumped on the fact that one of them came from Dwayne Richard, who had previously said he was going to take Billy down. Apparently, Billy and Dwayne had some beef. Dwayne even made a documentary called The King of Con in 2012, which aimed to expose a lot of Billy's lies. Billy used this beef with Dwayne to claim that Dwayne edited the tapes to look like MAME. Yes, that's right. Billy is claiming that Dwayne meticulously went through every single level and edited the loading screens, then didn't tell anyone for an entire decade where his editing job was finally discovered by complete chance. Dwayne wasn't a even the person who discovered that the MAME loading screens were different. So Dwayne would have had to have been the only person in the world that knew, but didn't tell anyone. He would then have to hope that both the differences were discovered at all, and also that they were discovered specifically in Billy's tapes. This makes perfect sense, because everyone knows that if you do want to frame someone, the best way to do it is to keep it hidden, and also keep how to find it hidden, and hope that someone else discovers it years or decades later. Dwayne would also need to hope that no earlier copies of the performances or the originals were still around to show that they were different. And he would also need to know that Billy wouldn't keep his own copies either. And fortunately for Billy, while these tapes did match the footage shown in The King of Kong, The King of Kong didn't actually show the loading screen. So Billy can claim that it was only the loading screens that were edited. It didn't matter that Dwayne's copy also matched Greg's. Billy was claiming that Dwayne edited the footage and Billy was sticking by it. According to Billy, it was all a giant conspiracy to take him down. There's film, film footage, just like that. Film footage where it's discussed exactly creating a Donkey Kong score to bring Billy Mitchell down. Exactly. But then, Billy's story hit a snag when in early 2019, an old MTV clip surfaced of Twin Galaxies head referee Robert Merchek from early 2006. This is Bill Mitchell, the world's greatest Donkey Kong player, at 1,044,100, and he is in screen 116, and his score is now going to be 1,047,200 when the bonus is added. 
In this clip, Robert shows some of Billy's gameplay from his world record, the same world record shown in The King of Kong, and again it showed the MAME loading screen. This footage is crucial because Dwayne Richard only received a copy of this world record in 2007, so it's impossible for Dwayne to have edited this footage. The crazy thing about this footage is that it was found and was public information before Billy Mitchell even sued Twin Galaxies, and yet Billy still claimed in his lawsuit that Dwayne was responsible for framing him. Even as late as 2022, Billy was still peddling this story through his lawyer in his lawsuit against me. In January of 2023, during his deposition, Billy was asked about this MTV performance, and Billy did what he always does when he wants to avoid answering a question. He said that he hasn't seen it and doesn't have an opinion. What all on MTV? Was it ever displayed on MTV? I was told Robert Mirzak did it. Did you ever see that? No. Do you know if uh, the gameplay that appears on MTV is actually yours? I don't, don't have an opinion either way. Do you suspect it's not yours? I don't have an opinion either way. I haven't seen it. In fact, Billy said that he hasn't seen any of the tapes people are claiming are his. You're asking me about those scores that were played on a Don Donkey Kong arcade machine. And you're asking me about the tapes that are available on the dispute thread and what they mean. They mean nothing to me because I never saw them. They weren't mine. Exactly how good or bad they are, I would have no idea. So are you denying that those tapes on the dispute thread uh, are, your, are copies of your score I, performances? I cannot deny it. I haven't seen them. What I'm telling you is... Now YouTube answered. Okay. Mm. So on one hand, he is saying that Dwayne edited the tapes, and on the other hand, is saying that he's never even seen the tapes and doesn't have an opinion on them. Ultimately, this entire faked tape saga was put to bed in August of 2023, when the madman himself, Steve Wiebe, made his triumphant return, producing a bona fide copy of Billy's score from all the way back in 2006, even before The King of Kong was released. At some point, were you given a copy of Billy Mitchell's 7200 score performance? Yes, I was given one. It was later on after Fun Spot, before the documentary came out. Can't remember exactly. I'm putting it in the time frame of 2006. Um, one of the film crews, I believe, one person involved with the documentary. I had it stored in this box with all my other Donkey Kong tapes. I just put it in there and forgot all about it. Um, and then I just happened when, um, I was looking through it, this, when, um, I was asked if I had any tapes from his play, I was like, I don't believe so, but I went through and looked at all my old tapes and, and I happened to see it in there. Uh, did you ever modify that tape? I did not. From the time that you, uh, received the tape until the time that you turned it over to pursuant to a subpoena, had that tape ever left your possession? No sit in a box in my closet for 15 years or whatever it is. And wouldn't you know it, the loading screens, the gameplay, 100% of the footage is exactly the same as every other piece of footage that we've ever seen. This copy comes straight from the film crew of The King of Kong and has been sitting in a closet untouched for over 15 years. Unless Billy wants to claim that the producers of The King of Kong also knew about MAME transitions and edited the footage, not telling anyone until they were found by chance 13 years later, I think we can safely assume that this really is Billy's tape. Or maybe Steve is in cahoots with Dwayne and they've been plotting this scheme the entire time. What's even more alarming is that this new tape was intentionally suppressed for years. This is Ed Cunningham, the producer of The King of Kong. Ed is also conveniently filming for a follow-up documentary with Walter Day and Billy Mitchell. In 2020, Steve Wiebe talked to Ed about providing the tapes to Twin Galaxies, and Ed told Steve not to give them the tape and to stay out of it. Did you contact Ed or Seth about the tape? I called Ed and I said, is there a tape? And I think he told me, like, don't get involved with this stuff. And so at the time in 2020, did you just forget that you were given a million forty seven tape in 2006? Um, at that time, I might have remembered thinking I had something. And then 
when I talked to Ed about providing it, um, I was like, there was, this wasn't that thing legally happening. So I was like, do I, do I, if I have this tape, do I give it to him? And, and Ed said, I would just stay out of this. It appears as though Ed Cunningham is a money-hungry vulture who has protected Billy for years in order to prolong the lawsuit so that he could film content for a new documentary. We would have had this evidence years ago if not for this greedy piece of shit. We have it now though, and it has been added to the mountain of evidence cementing Billy Mitchell as the biggest con artist in video game history. By the way, Steve Wiebe produces a ton of music on his YouTube channel, and it's really good so go and show him some love by checking it out. Thank you so much for watching watching you legends. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video.